I'm a coke oh. addict. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, but Rishi Sunak will soon be out of the job of British Prime Minister. Why will this happen? Let's discuss. Rishi Sunak has been in politics now since 2015 when he won the Richmond Yorkshire constituency for the Conservative Party. He's been in Parliament ever since. In 2020, he became the Chancellor of the Exchequer after Sajid Javid quit uh, with a disagreement with Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings about uh, certain things to do with the Treasury. So uh, Rishi Sunak was brought in. He had only been an MP for five years at the time, so uh, he was pretty inexperienced. However, he does have uh, 15 years of business experience prior to going into politics. I guess that's why he was chosen. However, in 2020, after the Chris Pincher affair and many of the other affairs affecting Boris Johnson that brought about his downfall, uh, Rishi Sunak quit the government and it basically put in motion the end of Boris Johnson's prime ministership. He ran for the Conservative uh, Party uh, leader in 2022, losing to Liz Truss, and we all know what happened to her. After that, he was put into power, basically. He's an unelected prime minister, basically. And uh, that's one of the reasons why maybe Rishi Sunak doesn't really have uh, a lot of respect from most parts of the British public, I think. Not many people voted for him. And in many elections since he's been the Prime Minister and the leader of the Conservative Party, the, lead, the, the Conservative Party has done really badly in elections, such as the most recent local elections across England. We haven't got a proper grip of the system and I will grip it and I will fix it. Since becoming the Prime Minister of the UK, Rishi Sunak has regularly mentioned his five priorities for government. Let's go through those five priorities now and check to see if he's achieving them. So here are his five priorities for government. Halving inflation has definitely been achieved. Economy growing. Most recent figures also show the economy has grown, which is good, especially after a technical recession. Debt falling. I believe actually debt is rising. Waiting lists, although they claim are currently falling, they're still above pre-COVID levels. Small boats, well, they've passed new laws to try to stop the new the small boats, but uh, nothing's really come of that yet. Uh, and I would say that's also a failure at the moment. Pockets of hard-working British families. Everything you just mentioned is useful for people. Obviously, another thing that hasn't really been looking so good for him recently is also the opinion polling. Uh, this is the most recent opinion poll since the uh, English local council elections. The most recent YouGov opinion poll has the Conservatives down on about 18%. This has been dropping since uh, 2020, as you can see through the graph. Now, this opinion polling and most recent uh, local election results have made Rishi Sunak claim that we are heading towards a hung parliament, something that uh, Sky News have also claimed could happen according to English Council election results and some mathematics that they've done. This is uh, what Sunak is currently holding on to. But even if you say, oh, there's going to be a hung parliament, it sounds like you know you can't win an election. You know you can't basically gain a majority at the next election. So even him talking about it like this way is basically admitting it to himself that he can't win a majority at the next election. Uh, all he can hope for really is if the Conservatives remain the majority party or if they can make the defeat not so big, so maybe they can stay in government with another party, I guess, I don't know. But uh, these are the words he said, uh, uh, we're heading towards a hung parliament. And I think when you say that, you pretty much say you can't win an election. And it's pretty much true. I don't think Rishi Sunak will win an election. Another thing we've had to deal with regarding Rishi Sunak is also his weak leadership skills and his poor ability really to do politics properly. What I mean by that is many things in the past, such as how he's dealt with things that Suella Braverman said while she was in government. Also, some of the things that a Tory donor said or claimed to have said about uh, Diana Abbott, which were racist and took them ages to deal with. And even regarding someone like Lee Anderson, who actually himself uh, uh, decided to defect to the Reform UK party. Uh, have all meant that Sunak's uh, ability to deal with things uh, in the moment have not been very good. 
He's also, though, admittedly had to deal with uh, both the right and also the left or centre, we can call it, of uh, his party, the right-wing Tory ERG, against the centre One Nation uh, Tory party. They're kind of like um, at war with each other, we can say, and he's trying to, I guess, position himself right in the middle. Um, maybe sometimes that can be a good idea because you want to try to keep your party together, but the, on the other hand, maybe he should pick a side, maybe. Um, I think, though, that's what he's trying to do, and that's why he makes some of the statements he says. To bring back someone like David Cameron, for example, who has actually looked more prime ministerial than him in some of the media work he's been doing, uh, which makes Sunak even look more weak, I think, uh, means that, yeah, he's trying to keep... Uh, the One Nation liberal side of the Tory party on side. However, uh, with people like Sir Emma Braverman in the party and other people uh, in the ERG, he's trying to appease to them by saying, yes, talk about the ECHR, ECHR, always talking about this because he knows that's something that's on their mind. He's trying to keep feet in both camps and maybe it's not a sensible thing. Um, but he's had to deal with this and maybe the way he's been dealing with it has not been good. I don't think he's made any real good decisive decisions. He seems to weigh the too long. Uh, some people have uh, gone into the media, said something, and then they have to change the narrative after that's happened, which has made the people in the party look very bad. It also doesn't help that every other week there's a leadership um, election that's going to happen or someone is going to throw themselves into the ring or maybe they're going to replace him. Actually, right now, it all seems set that they're just going to let him go forward for the election and see what happens, because probably whoever will be the leader now will be the loser. So many people will be in line to replace him to pick up the pieces when that's happened. So all of these things, when you think about it, coupled with uh, the election looming uh, in the second half of this year, as he's claimed, uh, it's not going to happen in January 2025. It's going to happen in the second half of this year. So between the months of July and December, we're expecting a general election in the UK. We will see Rishi Sunak probably be out as the Prime Minister. I don't see him clawing it back. The only thing that can happen is if uh, something good happens, maybe, or Sunak can does something magic. Or on the other hand, people fall out of love with Labour, which I'm not saying can't happen because it definitely can. I think uh, Keir Starmer has definitely shown that he only really cares about power and will do anything to get there. Uh, we've seen that by the defection of Natalie Elphick, who was a right-wing ERG member of the Conservative Party, remember. Now she's in the uh, Labour Party, um, and she now is uh, agreeing with Sir Softy. That's what Natalie Elphick called um, Keir Starmer, by the way. So Keir Starmer, I, I think, he can also lose it for Labour as well. <laughs> yes, maybe uh, Rishi Sunak and the Conservatives are helping Labour become the government, but also Keir Starmer could really uh, shoot himself in the foot by doing some things like that, I think, as well, that could, in effect, help Sunak stay Prime Minister. I guess we will see, but I do really think today, in the middle of May, that he's, he's out this year, Sunak. I really think about it. I really think it will happen. And anyway, I'm interested to know what you think and uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with anything I said or if you disagree or if you have a different opinion. I'm really interested to know. Also, uh, what do you think will happen? Do you think that will be the end of Sunak and his political career? Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed, press the subscribe button.